I thought this um, package sounded a bit rattly. When you're sending cameras across the planet, it usually pays to do a little bit more in the way of packaging than this. I don't know what these were, whether they were sealed bags of air or whether they're just plastic bags. They've got nothing in them now. And loose in the box here, we have a Retina 2A camera. It's lucky they built these things tough. See if you can do a better job of packaging than that if you'd like to get the camera to me in one piece, please. Well, another camera that uh, previously belonged to the customer's family member and apparently it ceased functioning some years ago. I'm just having a quick look at it. I'm looking at the state of the lens. It, it doesn't look very good at all. There's certainly some dirt or marking in there that's worse than just haze. At the top of the camera, what can we see? Well, the leather patch is missing here. We've got some black paint in there to fill in for that. Frame counter is sitting at number one. Let's rotate that. That's very stiff and it doesn't click. There's no click sounds in there. That's suspicious. It's going to need a frame counter spring at the very least. But the film advance appears to work. Why the lever was sticking out when it arrived, who knows. The shutter fires. Yeah, there's certainly problems with this. Absolutely no noises coming from that. There's, there's two ratchet actions happening there and neither of them are happening. So someone has dealt to that and done not naughty things to it. The rewind needs to be tightened up, I would say. That screw's not tight. pair of Zeiss bumps on the back, a big ugly one on that hinge there. What's the rangefinder look like? Um, broken. I can't see through the rangefinder. Looking at the back here, the eyepiece on the back of the rangefinder seems to be shifted relative to the top cover. I can't see through it at all. I suspect that it's been disassembled, put back in the wrong place. Could be a bit of a mystery. I'd better get the tools onto this one immediately, I think, before this poor thing dies. Let's start at the beginning. We'll start by removing the rewind knob. and its collar and since that's coming apart we might as well spin it apart and the screw can go in there and the spring can go in there and I'm separating out, separating out the parts that will not go through the ultrasonic cleaner our film advance lever let's get into this it's got some scratches on the top of that screw suggesting that someone had had it off. Let's have the screw out and the washer out. Let's lift this off. There's our frame counter spring broken. Something else, yeah, the lock mechanism here, for the end of film lock mechanism, that's gone. So, let's separate out these components. 
there's a spring missing out of there too. It should have had a... Uh, oh, it has got the wavy washer. I thought it was missing. It's there. It's wedged in. It's um, somewhat misshapen. These two pieces won't go through the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, our film advance lever here is missing pieces. The end of film latch is completely gone. The leatherette patch is obviously gone. So, I'll have to have to do a pretty good search to find the parts to fix that. The latch in particular is um, fairly fragile. Typically they, they breathe their last breath after somebody gets to the end of the film and then when it locks they decide that it's a problem and they just twist the thing off instead of realising that they're at the, at the end of the film. Okay, so two screws on the top cover, one at each end, and these do not look healthy. Now, what will we find underneath? Their top cover. Nothing particularly obviously wrong there. Here's our rangefinder. And at first glance it's relatively complete. Let me have a little look through it. No, I still can't see through it. Something has gone very wrong with that. Let's have it off. Oh, the screws are tight. One's come loose. It's mate here. Does not want to come loose. Try a bigger screwdriver. Now yeah, that's better. What can go wrong with a rangefinder? It's very unwell. Let's start taking it apart and finding out. Let's take that out. Take this single screw out here. That was tight, but they usually are very tight. The washer, the wavy washer. And the bush, that all looks pretty much as I'd expect it to look. Let's take the mask off the front. I see the semi-silvered mirror. Take the screw out of the back. What's this? Okay, so this lens is part of this component. It's not something I would typically remove during a service, 
because removing it brings its own problems. So to get to that, we have to remove our semi-silvered mirror. And we'll show you this component. So this is held by a single screw at the back. And this will slide out of this end of the range finder, but not the other end. So there we have a little glass lens that sat in there and this collar now one of these that ring either sat on one side of that or the other and I don't know which at the moment but that collar sat on there and held that all in tight now there's a collar there That's a fibre collar by the looks of it. Is it the only one? Yep. So this, I've got to put round back in the right way round. Of course, as I said, I don't normally remove this from the camera because it's a problem getting the alignment correct afterwards. Getting the position of this correct in the body is important because otherwise, as you move your eye across the viewfinder or position your eye slightly differently this time than last time in the viewfinder the apparent alignment horizontal alignment of the rangefinder images shifts which of course is not desirable because it means that you could adjust the rangefinder so it was correct when your eye was in one position but would be incorrect if your eye was in a slightly different position so there we have it. That's the answer to that rangefinder. That's why it could not be seen through. It's because this lens unit was completely disassembled and had actually fallen apart. I suppose the question is there, did that happen all by itself? I mean, did it die of natural causes or was it murdered? I can't remember ever seeing one with this problem before, but uh, certainly interesting. So this particular little component here, that's the mystery component for us because it's got to go in the right way round. And so I will need another one to act as my template to see which way round that part was fitted. I've checked another rangefinder from my parts bins, which was a um, very sad condition. But I checked that to see which way around that little lens should sit. And I'm fairly confident that the concave side should be outwards, it should be towards the, the finder the eyepiece lens, that the plain side was inwards. Of course I'm relying on the one I'm using as a guide and as I say that was in a fairly sad state so I'm assuming that no one had had that apart and reassembled it incorrectly. That would seem a reasonable supposition since they're not easy to unscrew that little screw. And that's certainly the concave side that I'm seeing there. So, that little glass lens. Let's have a look at that. I'll just flare out the video camera. Let's get some glass cleaner on that.
the edges of the glass are um, quite dirty. I'm trying to get an impression of the surface of the glass. I can sort of judge by reflected window light what those surfaces look like. That looks pretty good. Let me assemble this. So plain side in, I decided. Let's nudge that in with a toothpick. I think that flipped on me. Let's try that again. No, it didn't. It's just fairly subtle, that concavity, and uh, not particularly easy to judge. Put that little spacer washer, that fibre washer on the top. and then the screw that holds that in place. Probably run that down with the tip of a screwdriver fairly well. Yes, yeah, that's more than adequate. Let me blow the dust out of that and have another look at it and see how clean that glass is. That looks pretty good. Oh, I'm going to give that one more go over with the glass cleaner. These Q-tips are probably a bit large in diameter for doing this task. Let's see what sort of a result we got. What I'm looking for is some sparkle when I look at the reflection of the window light. And that looks sufficiently sparkly. I think that's good. And put this back in the rangefinder body. Line up the screw hole, I suppose. And the screw that holds it, this screw is um, very small diameter. Don't over tighten it, you'll just snap it off and then you'll wish you hadn't done that. So I'm going to start this right in the middle of that position and my semi silvered mirror. Well, typically I clean these in the ultrasonic cleaner. But uh, I know that the ones in the Retina 2 are relatively robust and they'll stand some manual cleaning. So let me clean this. There's a small patch of glue visible at one end here. You certainly wouldn't do this in a Retina 3C camera. That silvering would be gone. Yeah, that's the plain side. This is the silver side. Feed this in. Now 
that looks good. Now the rear, the eyepiece glass if you like here, that of course is plain glass and um, can be cleaned with glass cleaner quite freely. Now this one is plain on one side, convex on the other. Now the convex side goes inwards, the plain side goes outwards. You get this in position. Check that I've left no dirty marks or dust on there, that looks good. And I'll put the mask in position. Blow that little shreds of cotton off there. Tighten that screw up. That looks good. Looks, looks fine. Now this piece mask at the front. The black paint on here will disappear immediately if you were to choose to put this through the ultrasonic cleaner with that piece in place. So that piece always has to be removed prior to cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner. Of course we're not putting anything through the ultrasonic cleaner today. Done this manually. I think that's correct. Now, my prism at the end here needs to be cleaned. Again, glass cleaner will do for this. The outside surface is easy enough to get to. The angled surface, of course, is buried under paint and silvering. And the inside surface is the only other surface that you can need to worry about. Making sure I blow out any dust. That looks good. Because this is such an unusual problem to see on a rangefinder, I'm keen to get this little problem out of the way first and get it back on the camera body and see how the focus otherwise works, whether the rangefinder functions normally, and get the alignment correct. Because that little lens that had come apart It's going to cause me grief. Now I'll just get this screw done up and then I've got to change my video camera battery because it's complaining. That looks close enough for prep to start with. Let's clean this up. Well first off I need to use some naphtha and clean the dirty old sticky grease off everything here. I'm making sure that the wavy washer has enough form to it, that it's got enough wave. That, if that's flattened right out as you sometimes see what happens is it stop, means that this thing can float, it'll wobble up and down, and if it wobbles up and down, your vertical alignment will wobble up and down, and you'll go crazy trying to get your vertical alignment correct. So I've cleaned these surfaces to get rid of that old grease, 
pop that bush out, clean in there, clean that bush, top and bottom, and the glass, the glass surface of course is more glass cleaner. Inside and out. That looks fine. I'll wipe a bit of molybdenum paste through the centre there. I'll just run some lightly over that surface. we got here we'll use this as an anvil that was a range finder I used as my sample so that arm can go back on there just a wipe where the wavy wash is going to run put this washer on the top put the screw in place run it down tighten it up check that the arm moves freely and it does get the spring in place so we've got to get that through the end of the spring like that and stretch it out, drop it in position in the notch. Check that moves freely. Now I'm going to look out the window and see what I see. Well first off my vertical alignment is well off. It's miles too low, my moving image is miles too low, so let's just adjust that, more again is wanted. One of those screws doesn't want to really move very freely, I think it's a bit damaged. Okay, so my vertical alignment is pretty good, my horizontal alignment is obviously out, now I can see I've got a speck of cotton there, let's get rid of that. So, nothing else has changed, this is where we started it, it may have to do with this piece here, I've got to get my horizontal alignment fairly good so that I can judge um, if the image is shifting as I move my eye in the finder, so I've got to get my horizontal adjustment fairly good first, let me have a look and see what we've got, it doesn't come back all the way to infinity, the screw here is fairly well wound in, so let's just back that out a bit. Is that going to move for me? Yes it is, I've got about a two and a half out of that. That should put that puts me pretty close. So my horizontal alignment's fairly close. My vertical alignment's fairly close. I'll see if I can improve my vertical alignment while I'm doing this. I'm not quite all the way back to infinity. My images don't converge to infinity quite. So I'm just going to flacken that screw off. Another part of a turn. Now they do. And my vertical alignment, my moving image is slightly high, so I'll just tighten that screw slightly. My vertical alignment is good. Now I've got to find out 
whether I've got the position of this lens correctly. Basically looking through the finder I've got to watch the convergence of my two images. If they diverge as I move the rangefinder across my eye from right to left it means that this is incorrectly placed and I've got to try moving it slightly one way or slightly the other way until I get to the point where as I move my eye across the rangefinder or the rangefinder across my eye there is no change in the divergence of those images. And this can be pretty subtle. But today must be lotto ticket day because I'm not getting any shift. And see if I can get my vertical alignment a little bit better. The vertical alignment can't be finalised really until the rangefinder is on the camera. But it's pretty good. Okay, I'm quite happy with the state of that. I'm going to put that back on the camera body and see how it works. Or we'll see if it works. Since it was such a disaster when we came in. Oh, in the interest of not transferring too much rubbish to the base of the rangefinder because I'm going to be stripping and cleaning the entire camera after this anyway. Let's just remove some of this filth that's sitting here. You see how dirty that is. Just put the rangefinder back in place and see if it functions. Where are my two screws? Here they are. So this is a very unusual problem to strike with a Retina 2A. And I don't honestly remember when I last had something like this to deal with. Tighten those two screws up and see how this behaves. Oh, well, the focus is so stiff that uh, that's not good. And the adjustment's a mile out. That doesn't surprise me because as soon as you've disturbed something, you'll need to adjust this until you get it correct. It's pretty good. And of course with the rangefinder in the camera body it's easier to hold this up and it's easy for me to judge whether there's a shift in my images. I can see that the vertical alignment is still not quite correct. But that normally moves when you fit it to the camera body because the coupling here will effectively lift that arm which changes the angle of the arm and changes the vertical alignment. Now I've gone the wrong way.
Oh, that's good. Okay, so we've recovered to the point where we have a rangefinder that works. The focus on this camera is very, very stiff, but it does still work. Well, that was the most interesting problem we're likely to strike with this one, I hope. I'll have to find another film advance lever because this one is missing so many components and um, move on from there I suppose.